So, as you know, well, uh, I want to talk a bit uh, about uh, these protests in Romania mm -hmm. that now are entering the third week. They already entered the third week. Um, and um, I see that there are also some people uh, from Romania and people that are familiar with the topic and I want to make it more like a discussion and not only me to talk so if you want to jump in or just make some comments um, but if you have questions we can leave the questions for the end um, okay so um, this story starts in 2009 um, when uh, Romania uh, agreed uh, with IMF uh, to get uh, 20 billion euros uh, as, a, as an answer uh, to, to this uh, movement by the Romanian government. Uh, they also decided uh, to introduce uh, austerity measures uh, um, in a very radical way. Um, the government uh, managed to cut uh, um, pensions, they managed to cut uh, unemployment, uh, a lot of uh, social assistant, uh, assistance, and um, also to cut 25% uh, of uh, the state employees. I mean, not all of them, but uh, the most precarious ones. Um, that, that was... Uh, that was so radical that even IMF uh, made some negative comments about this. It was too much even for them. Uh, but nevertheless, the government um, said that they have the support of, uh, of the population and they can do this. Uh, no one will be so pissed. Um, that was not the only thing that happened, um, they uh, also introduced uh, new laws uh, about restricting the right to protest, uh, um, they changed the labor code uh, recently, uh, reducing uh, workers' rights and uh, the trade union, uh, the possibility to uh, be active in trade unions, uh, they extended the working hours and so on. Uh, there were like a lot of changes. Maybe, maybe someone else can say more about. Oh, oh. Yeah, I can say a bit. So, uh, what, so they sort of limited or somehow removed some of the things that helped the employees to strike, uh, and uh, somehow removed some of the protection for the trade union leaders because there was some kind of inbuilt protection in the law that said you cannot fire a trade union leader at all during his term or three years after, and they removed some of this. And they also made these indefinite contracts. I don't mm. know. So basically, the law before now the law forced to the employers to uh, all, to have like twice two definite contract, uh, definite term contracts for maximum one year, for example. And that was two, they are forced to offer an indefinite contract, and they extended this for I don't know three times, five mm. times, something like that. It's uh, so basically from, okay, I work two years for definite contract and then you have to give me some indefinite. Now it's like you can give me 20 years of an indefinite contract. Uh, definite contract, so it's like mm -hmm. every year I'm in, at your hands. Well, another, uh, another new law uh, gave uh, a lot of rights uh, for private companies to start exploitation uh, as uh, representing the state which was a big mess, there was not a big reaction against this law. But the law that actually um, started all this protest uh, was a, a project uh, about uh, uh, privatizing the healthcare system. Uh, it was, uh, this, I mean, it was not even discussed, it was a big issue. It was not even discussed, but the president uh, talked about it and uh, it was like um, the, a big initiative uh, that uh, private companies already knew about it. They started to buy ambulances, so they were, they were trying to privatize uh, the whole healthcare system, um, but maintaining the taxes, 
so people would pay taxes, but the money they, they would collect, they would give to private companies uh, to offer this like basic uh, health care and so on. And um, besides that, there were like different packages, you know, like uh, when you buy a, a phone card and so on. So it was exactly like this. Um, it, it was very interesting that a lot of companies already knew about it. They started to, to um, hire doctors and so on. And there were um, like these security companies. Uh, they bought uh, ambulances and all this uh, uh, equipment uh, to start their new business. Um, that, that was like the moment when people started to get out on the street. Um, it was um, quite a success, this movement, in the sense that uh, this project uh, was, uh, was withdrawn. And um, the, the person that criticized, uh, he was, uh, he's a, he still is a, a state uh, secretary in the health minister, uh, ministry, um, the guy that criticized uh, this uh, this big uh, um, change in the healthcare system. Um, he resigned. He was insulted by the president. He was called a liar. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it was a very dirty scandal somehow, and uh, people got out on the street also to uh, support uh, this character. Um, so uh, the situation uh, changed uh, quite fast. Uh, um, in the sense that it started as a peaceful protest against this law, but uh, there were many groups, other groups joining the protest, this protest against the healthcare law, uh, with different claims. And it's, uh, it soon became uh, something bigger, uh, and uh, this, uh, this healthcare issue somehow... Uh, um, stayed uh, stay in the back, uh, and um, the reaction, the reaction of uh, of the state and uh, of the government uh, was quite aggressive from the start. They said that uh, this is an illegal protest. They were not allowed to uh, be in the square. They uh, have no authorization. Um, they started to arrest people. Um, the the gendarmes, which uh, are like this uh, militarized uh, police force, uh, uh, were arresting people, were making, uh, um, you know, like this aggressive interventions against the protesters. Um, the the group uh, grew. Uh, so this was started in Bucharest. But uh, soon after, in, in a couple of days, uh, they, uh, there were like different groups protesting in other cities, in Cluj, uh, especially, I think, in Yash. Uh, Didn't it start in Turgumoresh initially? Because of the healthcare, because the right Arafat is from Turgumoresh. Um, there, was, there was this uh, uh, big, uh, yeah, it was a big group uh, on the sea, but it was at the same time because they started at Kotrochen, actually, okay. and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it it was at the same time, yeah, you know. Exactly yeah, yeah. So it was not only in Bucharest; there were like uh, different groups in uh, different cities. Uh, uh, well, what happened uh, uh, soon after? There were more people coming out in the, on the streets, um, and especially at uh, Uni uh, University Square in Bucharest. Uh, and I, I want to talk more about this because this is what I know. I'm um, I was in Bucharest, and uh, I'm more in touch with with these groups and with what is going on there. Um, on uh, Sunday, on the 15th, um, there were, um, there were like, I don't know, 4,000 people in a square, uh, and uh, uh, there were uh, some groups uh, that tried to move um, towards uh, another, another square uh, called uh, Unira, uh, where you have like all these shops uh, and uh, banks and so on. Um, this group uh, 
was made out of uh, I don't know a couple hundred people. Um, it was uh, presented uh, in the media, in the mainstream media, as a small group of football supporters of these ultras and so on, uh, which is which was not the case because uh, okay, most of them were young people, uh, but. Uh, there were different groups uh, present there. You had also these uh, uh, football supporters, which had uh, the experience of fighting with the police uh, and so on, but uh, there were also different other categories, uh, like there were um, young people coming from the pubs. There were uh, the Roma... Uh, tenants uh, from uh, from this area where um, where they they are supposed to be evicted uh, to gentrify uh, from uh, the old center and they were also there uh, in this group uh, you had uh, you had some uh, anarchists uh, that like there is this antifa group uh, the claims that they were present there and uh, they made some statements afterwards about it. Um, hipsters, there were also like a bunch of hipsters present in this protest. And what happened with this group was that uh, they started to smash uh, these windows uh, at the banks and at uh, these shops. Like uh, they were targeting uh, some specific representations of uh, this. Uh, um, you know, you have like this fake image of prosperity and so on present in the center, and they were attacking exactly these symbols of uh, neoliberal capitalism. The repression uh, was really strong uh, from the police. They were fighting with the police. Uh, they managed to, uh, to push them back. They pushed back uh, the police force. Um, they started to burn different things. Uh, they were making some barricades. Um, and uh, to this action, uh, the police uh, reacted in a very violent way. They brought more force, and they started uh, to arrest a lot of people that were on the street in that area. They were beating a lot of people that were just passing. They were like these guys. I know there was a guy that uh, went to buy bread and milk. He was arrested. They, uh, uh, they were beating him at the police station for hours. They left him at 6 in the morning. Um, there was another guy uh, that was just uh, passing uh, this area. He was not part of the protest. Uh, they were beating him so hard that they broke his leg. He was holding his leg in his hand. He, the guy lost his leg after this incident. Well, this is what happened at this Uniri Square. The police came back to Universitate, to the other square with this full force, and they started to push people. They started to use tear gas and uh, arrest people, uh, use their clubs and so on. Um, I was also there uh, at, the, at this corner. There was a, this part from Unira. There was, it was a very peaceful protest. Nothing was happening. No one was throwing anything like stones or whatever they wrote in the media. Um, and uh, it was like this huge wave of, uh, you know, this riot uh, uh, police officers just kicking everyone, uh, throwing tear gas and so on. We... Uh, we were running on some streets, on these small streets, and so on. They were uh, throwing tear gas at us, and so on. Um, while uh, they were also, I mean, this is interesting. Uh, so just let uh, just let me finish this part. Um, so when uh, this is a very interesting uh, part because uh, their presence in the square is justified mainly by. Uh, protecting the rights uh, of the people that are using their cars because they have to keep the streets uh, free and, uh, you know, people can travel with, with their cars. And it was like this extreme situation where uh, we were on Carol Boulevard running from this uh, 
police officers they were on on a part of the uh, on a sidewalk throwing tear gas on the other part um and uh, you know the cars were in the middle just <laughs> you know going normally to their the guys in this uh, SUVs and so on no problem you know but they were protecting that um there was also a small action there uh, uh that we tried uh, i mean we stopped these cars and there were like many many people running so they just oh, where are you going you, you should uh, support us and you know they are coming to <laughs> kill us <laughs> where are you going you know and these cars were stopped and so on but people left and they um, they freed this uh, part of the square uh, in a very short time no uh, that was on sunday of the fifth on the 15th um and basically the protest w- was over that day people came back the other day uh, there were many discussions about this uh, uh these actions and this police brutality and then they changed a bit their strategy in the sense that uh you had uh, if before they uh, you had this barrier of police officers um very intimidating and so on i mean I, i'm not saying that it was better but now you had like these uh, groups of uh, three or four uh, police officers in riot gear in the middle of protesters you know like every three meters you have like this small group within the uh, the demonstration uh, also they started so that uh, that was on monday they started to check um, papers for everyone i mean not everyone that's also very interesting they uh they are checking only men's papers women uh are uh, you know they can go they can walk in in the demonstration and this is a very intimidating technique uh, they are also filming you when you get inside um they are um which is illegal i mean even their Uh, bosses said that that they have no right to film you and uh uh they are doing this uh, body search uh, uh to quite a lot of people not not all of them like and they're always saying that they are looking for weapons they are looking for drugs uh, where did you hide the drugs uh, i know that you have drugs and all that there are many reports uh, saying that uh I mean they found people with I don't know weed and uh, some knives and so on and there are some reports saying that uh this uh these objects these these things were put by the police. Uh and uh, you have like all these intimidating techniques which are still going on um in um in the um, in the evening I mean at uh, 11 they evacuate the square sometimes they do it in a very violent way they say that it's it's illegal to protest i mean it, anyway it's illegal to protest and they use this all the time when they are making an arrest or they are giving a fine and so on. i mean they are doing this without any logic somehow uh but they always say oh you are taking part in an illegal protest so they are evacuating the square every evening at 11 sometimes this evacuation is uh, very brutal like it happened uh, on thursday last week uh and they were very proud of themselves uh, saying that uh, they managed to evacuate the square uh, in 3 minutes and 10 seconds and we're talking about hundreds of people here um and their method was the usual one using the clubs uh, um i i don't think they they used tear gas that time uh but uh, they uh, they used their fists they used their legs uh, they were arresting people <laughs> also for taking part in illegal protests and so on. Uh, everyone was running uh, and so on um now uh, uh the the i i want to talk a bit Uh, you wanted to yeah, make a I comment sorry i forgot the, 15th, the repression spread from the fighting with the sort of violent protesters and they came back and started beating the peaceful protesters also yes that's what happened okay but that wasn't in the media that's 
yeah, I mean, of course, media had like these different stories, and you know, they see something else. But uh, also, uh, I, I have to mention that uh, the journalists are present uh, when these actions are taking place. Sometimes uh, they are not allowed to film, uh, especially independent journalists. Uh, there were many journalists that were beaten by the police. They were arrested and so on, uh, and you have also this, this type of stories. Um, and um, now I want to talk a bit about uh, what, uh, what people um, are, uh, are there for, you know, because uh, as I mentioned, you have all these laws and uh, there are like a lot of groups now present uh, in the square, uh, at least for, you know, the, like the last two weeks. I'm talking about the whole period. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> um, there, are, there are different claims, different groups with different claims, but uh, one of the, the main uh, critique, of course, is this uh, critique of, uh, of these neoliberal policies, these austerity measures that were imposed and the, are affecting uh, a large group in Romania. Uh, there, there are like a lot of uh, activists uh, from um, environmental groups, uh, environmental NGOs, uh, and uh, now um, the situation is also changing in this direction. We had a I don't, I don't know how big it was uh, because I got this in, mm, information kind of, I'm, I'm not sure about it but it was uh, this protest yesterday in another place in Bucharest uh, against uh, the uh, gold exploitation at Roșia Montana um, I know that you also had a protest here in Budapest against this exploitation and now there is another big issue that is present in the square uh, it's uh, this uh, exploitation of uh, shale gas that uh, was um, agreed by the government on 17th of January. No one knew about it. It was kind of a hidden agreement. They will start, uh, I mean, who are they? They are like Chevron, Luke Oil, big companies. They will start this exploitation in February. Yes. Where? Uh, Danube Delta, uh, Black Sea, uh, Transylvania, Mol uh, Moldavia, they are all over the place. There are many exploitation sites. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, shell gas exploitation. Uh, what, what they are doing is like you have this rock and they are uh, in injecting a toxic cocktail uh, into this rock in order to, um, to get the gas from the rock into their pipelines. Well, this toxic cocktail gets into the groundwater. It's very dangerous. Uh, and um, we don't even know exactly what's in this cocktail. We know uh, from some other exploitation, like uh, in Canada and US, uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, elements of it, but it's, uh, it's considered an industrial secret. Um, well, this, uh, this type of uh, exploitations uh, provoke earthquakes uh, and uh, the area, the surface where they are doing this, uh, this exploitation is basically destroyed. Uh, they are cutting forests and so on. And Danube Delta, uh, it's a natural reservation. They will start it there. They will start it in Vama Vecchio also, which is, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, an interesting place at the the sea and so on, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's also interesting that there, there was no debate about this. No one, you know, talked about this. There was no statement coming from the government that, um, you know, we will start this, whatever. Um, the strongest reaction actually came from, uh, from Bulgaria because uh, they had a big uh, protests against uh, this exploitation there and they managed to stop to stop it and they were also protesting in Bulgaria they were protesting in front of the Romanian embassy and they were also in solidarity 
with the Bucharest and I mean the all, all the protests in Romania and uh, um, now uh, so the now there are like many people present in the square uh, protesting uh, against this exploitation that will start soon I don't know what will happen um, besides this uh, this um, environmental issues uh, there are uh, many claims regarding uh, the political class um, there is a strong critique of the present government the president but also uh, all other parties uh, like uh, the social democrat party the liberal party um, other anyway that, like uh, no one, I mean, no politician w um, was allowed in the square. Everyone who tried to come and join the protest, even if they were in the opposition, they were booed, they were kicked out. It happened the same uh, with, the, uh, with, the with the fascists, with the new right movement, whatever party, what they are, um, which, uh, which is uh, uh, the Romanian... Uh, Hungarian guard or something like this to get the, <laughs> the image. Uh, they were kicked out uh, of the square um, by the protesters, not, not by the police. <laughs> and uh, uh, there is this strong reaction against any form of uh, uh, party politics present in the square. It happened, all, I mean, the only party that was allowed in the square uh, was the Green Movement. Uh, and this is like a, a bit of a scandal uh, because uh, their leader uh, tried to capitalize this, uh, uh, let's say, privileged position in the square and try to negotiate with the opposition. Um, and this is this was very badly received in the square. Um, many members of his party uh, asked him to resign. He didn't resign. They resigned. Now the uh, Green Movement Party is not present in the square anymore. And which day was that? That they went. Well, what was that? Uh, that they went on the protest from the beginning. They went to this Green. Yes, yes, it was from the beginning. It was from the beginning, uh, but uh, this change happened uh, um, happened last week. Uh, or this? When, when was this? Uh, the Usele demonstrate. Yeah, the opposition meeting was somewhere on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday when the second yeah. clash was. Well. Okay. Because, because there were more yeah. people in the square when the people uh, from the opposition came and then they started the, yes, yes. the second uh, so the opposition had a different uh, demo uh, in another place then they came to join uh, the protest at uh, Universitate they left quite soon they are not so well received uh, and uh, when they had this demonstration the opposition you had this guy from the Greek movement say no I represent uh, uh, University Square, and I'm joining forces with them, which was a complete lie, and uh, the reaction was very strong against us. So now there is no political party present, uh, and uh, there is also a sort of uh, a movement uh, of claiming uh, this protest from a uh, big group of NGOs, um, which is also problematic uh, because uh, they were making some uh, big claims of representing the people there, um, having some demands. Uh, mm, there is a strong rejection of that also. Uh, but who are the people present in the square? Um, you have like a lot of informal groups. You have like a... a it functions mainly as a grassroots movement. Uh, you have uh, anarchists, you have uh, uh, these uh, ecologist movements, uh, you have uh, monarchists also, you have uh, even uh, some um, I don't know, weird groups, I would call them, 
for example, like the free Dacians are there, <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know exactly what they want, but... Um, and... Uh, um, you have like these pensioners that are coming every day. You have a big uh, student um, <coughs> representation um, in the square. There are like a lot of uh, students coming from different uh, um, different universities, different um, departments, and they are kind of um, united with their own group. They have different claims and so on. Um, and um, you have also uh, union people that are not affiliated, which is also interesting. The unions, um, even if they had some small protests in support of this, and some smaller trade unions uh, ask for a general strike uh, if uh, the demands are not uh, respected by the government, were. I mean, people are asking in the square for the government to resign, for the president to resign, and so on, to reverse these austerity measures, and so on. There, there are many lists of demands coming from there, and uh, some smaller trade unions supported it, but we don't have, like, a strong uh, trade union uh, movement in support of the protest. But there are a lot of... Uh, Union is present in the square on their own. Uh, um, and um, about about the students, I want to say also uh, that the university uh, bu uh, in Bucharest, I'm talking about Bucharest, uh, Bucharest University uh, made a public, a public complaint against uh, the gendarmerie uh, because they occupied... Uh, part of the university in order to do their surveillance on the square because it's right there basically you have this uh, Bucharest University um, there were there were some students uh, in class waiting to uh, take an exam they were kicked out by the gendarmes uh, they had no paper whatever to be there they were totally <laughs> <laughs> on their own, so to say. Uh, they didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to negotiate. They just started to kick out everyone from this part of the university in a very brutal way in order to see what is going on in the square. Uh, as I mentioned already, there are taking photos. Uh, there are like these uh, <laughs> things flying <laughs> above us, uh, filming all the time. Uh, uh, sorry? Drones, like in the yeah. U.S. Army. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, they, have, uh, they have very good technology, actually. Um, and uh, also, there are many cases uh, of uh, people being infiltrated, like these police officers, secu uh, like Secret Service guys, and so on. They are all present there. Um, and it was like a funny situation uh, on Sunday, uh, with this uh, violent protests uh, at Uniri, uh, they were beating one of the violent protesters uh, quite quite bad. Uh, and actually, he was working. He was a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's not funny, but uh, uh, the guy. And this was filmed by uh, by some uh, some media, some independent uh, media guy. Uh, and the guy was yelling, I'm one of you, I'm one of you, you know. <laughs> they didn't believe him. <laughs> um, they also, I mean, um, it was also a report from uh, independent media uh, that the secret uh, service uh, um, occupied one of the buildings that is, I mean, some flats and uh, like a whole floor at... Uh, at some building, there are offices there, and uh, they occupied uh, this uh, this floor in order to have a better view on the square. I don't know exactly what they are doing there, uh, but we have these interesting reports coming uh, coming from media um, regarding uh, the um, 
police abuse. Uh, there are some um, NGOs that uh, started uh, to collect uh, uh, all these stories and uh, uh, there were like a lot of people arrested already. Uh, there were like a lot of fines given uh, and uh, they are trying uh, to represent these people, to protect them. Um, there's like this uh, Helsinki Committee and uh, Amnesty International, I think they are uh, making uh, some sort of uh, actions. Uh, okay, uh, now I want, if you want to add something to what I said, uh, and now I want to show you some photos from, uh, from uh, University Square uh, to get a better picture. Um, and uh, they're mainly with uh, with science, so to see what some people are uh, asking for and uh, what they are criticizing, uh, I will translate them. Uh, and most of them uh, were uh, taken by uh, by the Biblioteca Alternative Collective from Bucharest, and they are kind of documenting the whole. Sorry, um, what yeah. happened with the football supporters? Uh, well, it's it's also interesting with the football supporters um, that, uh, you know, like in media, it appeared that they were only football supporters. These violent protesters, whatever, they were arrested and so on, and uh, they managed to identify who was violent and so on because they were filming also. So they, they managed to get a big picture of who was actually there taking these violent actions. Uh, and uh, actually... It was like 10% football supporters. Uh, so one in 10, it was the football supporters. The, uh, they are also present in the square. Um, they, uh, even if they are in conflict, uh, like these different uh, um, groups of football supporters, now they, they, are, they are kind of united. They are, uh, they are also making claims uh, and... Uh, they do not come actually it's it's not like you have a clear group of football supporters because they come in the square as citizens they are also affected by these austerity measures and it was i mean from my point of view it was just uh, a media and uh, this uh, police invention of this violent group that has to be vilified and to uh, you know, uh, downgrade what, what is actually going on. <coughs> so you have like these two opposite groups, the, the violent football supporters and the peaceful pensioners uh, that are in the square, and that's it. Uh, yes? How would they have been identified by the media as football supporters based on what? Were they wearing uh, T-shirts with Stau or Dinamo, or would they be shouting uh, like... Uh, we have to score today, otherwise we lose the championship types of things. I mean, how, how, I'm really curious how you identify that, because like you say, they come there as citizens, and how you identify and make them a homogenous Because they announced that they are going to participate at the trophy. They announced that they are going to participate at the trophy. They're checking IDs. These people are usually, they have previous record. Yeah. So, you know, like if you want to track these people, they're already, even sites where you can find them. But that's that's what the gendarmerie was saying, you know, that they know them already, they know them from uh, football games and so on. And they are visible for the police. They don't care. Because there's also another thing that generally in Bucharest, I mean, maybe this is also generalization, but uh, and in Timisoara, football support, foot, the ultras are, are pretty racist, mm -hmm. as, far as, I, as far as I remember, not, not from all teams. So I'm wondering if, 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 it was, if it's the same kind of people that came, but I suppose not. Well, I I cannot tell you a lot about uh, these uh, groups, uh, uh, but um, I what I can say that uh, there were some discussions with them. There were uh, some interviews with uh, with them, and um, they were um, mm, they were saying that they were working together with anarchist uh, groups, uh, and uh, they they are actually. Uh, fighting against these neoliberal measures, and uh, it's an anti-capitalist movement. So from their point of view, I don't know, there are like a lot of different uh, groups of supporters, different ultras with their own identity and so on. 
um, and they do not uh, um, they do not uh, represent themselves as uh, you know I'm from this team I'm from this group and so on. Uh, even I mean we're having like a lot of discussions uh, also in the square and uh, in uh, different places um, in Bucharest uh, and they are also coming to these discussions uh, and uh, you know they are I mean from my from my perspective and I talk to th- to some of them and they are uh, um, I mean they are representing themselves as football supporters they say that. Uh, uh, I mean, there, there was even this, I don't know, they have an NGO or something, the Association of Football Supporters, they were also present in the square against this vilification of this group, uh, this social group, let's say. Um, and, of course, they are struggling with, with this media representation. And in this sense, they are reconstructing that identity as a football supporter. I'm a football supporter, but I also have some rights here, you know. <laughs> Doesn't mean that... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no problem. I have one comment and one question. Uh, my comment is that, uh, that the topic of uh, football supporters or ultras uh, seems to be a, a staple of uh, government propaganda in our countries because... Six years ago, there were like a month of riots in Hungary, and uh, and there was also a peaceful crowd and and a group of football supporters who, <laughs> at, at least that was communicated by the mainstream media. <laughs> it was actually a, a writing <laughs> group, <laughs> and uh, it was the, the ideology, but uh, but there were some common <laughs> common situations mm. like that yeah. and and the beating peaceful protesters too mm. uh, but my question was uh, that uh, how how the weather uh, is uh, and uh, of course the <laughs> repression uh, acts on the tendency of the protests mm. are they growing or uh, is the a- average man uh, terrified uh, from participating uh, mm-hmm. uh, well th- to to respond to your question, uh, or you want to make a comment on what he said about that? Uh, okay. Um, to to respond to this, um, uh, at the beginning, the, maybe there were not so people, uh, so many people interested in this protest. But after um, they saw what what was going on, what were the claims that there were also peaceful protesters that are uh, abused by the police and. Uh, um, tear gas and so on because there were also a lot of reports there were like a lot of things going on on social networks on YouTube you had all these videos uh, uh, filmed with a phone um, about this police violence and uh, information spread somehow uh, and and people got out on the street uh, in order to to support uh, the protesters also and to bring their own claims that was also part of it, um, and uh, there are like a lot of changes going on uh, in the square in the sense that the messages changed, uh, they became more articulated, there were like a lot of debates going on in the square, um, new groups are formed there, uh, there is uh, like this uh, cooperation between different groups that didn't know each other before and they are organizing things together there are like a lot of meetings also outside of the square in order to prepare actions and so on. Um, the weather, um, yeah, the weather was pretty bad this week in Bucharest. It was like this uh, huge snowstorm and so on. Um, but uh, the protests continued. I mean, there was no um, no stopping. Maybe there were fewer uh, fewer people, but. Mm, both both uh, parts of uh, so we have like this boulevard that is separating uh, the um, the square and you have people on one side in front of the uh, national theater and you have people on the other side in front of the university uh, and uh, they were present on both sides so um, and sometimes we were uh, we were going downstairs uh, also occupying like this metro. Uh, stop uh, on Sunday they were throwing tear gas at the metro stop also on that Sunday uh, they closed the metro and so on 
Um, so people are moving from one side to the other. There are some uh, small actions in a sense they, uh, that there are uh, groups uh, occupying, uh, for example, uh, pedestrian uh, walk um, at, at the lights and they don't want to move. The gendarmes are coming, they're, you know, getting everyone out and they are making some claims with some banners and so on. Then another group is going, so, you know, there are like all these, uh, these small actions going on. Um, also, um, there is a, um, a sort of um, solidarity with the gendarmes in the sense uh, that they are, um, there are many... Um, Slogans, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, they're having uh, um, that uh, gendarmes are, you are also affected uh, by poverty, uh, or uh, there are people asking uh, for uh, unions for gendarmes in the square because they don't have a union, they're not represented, some of them are uh, are supporting the protest, but they are working, they have to be there. Uh, of course, they don't have to be abusive, they don't have to be violent, and so on. Um, so the things changed a bit. It's already like the third week. They see that, you know, it. yeah, it's not going to stop soon, and they are doing their jobs, and... Well, I mean, that's that's what they claim, that, you know, we're just here to do our duty, even, we, even if we support it, we, uh, we, yeah, we're in a military structure, we have no right to uh, react against disorders, whatever. I mean, they also have their own, uh, you know, uh, their own motivation and their own ideas about what is going on. But there is a discussion also with them, you know. So even if they are there, there is a debate and, you know. So let's um, move to this photo. <coughs> okay, so... If you care, uh, get out of the house. This is one one claim, one slogan that is very present, uh, asking for people to join the square, to to join uh, the protest. Um, okay, this one is interesting. Uh, it says, uh, "We want liberty and opportunity, not another form of slavery." A popular government. Um, there are like a lot of claims, as, as I mentioned, there is a reaction against uh, um, party politics, uh, there is a reaction against um, representation in the parliament and so on. Uh, there are many claims for direct democracy, uh, for um, you know, like this claim for a popular government. Uh, well, this is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fireworks, exactly. Uh, uh, homeless people are very present uh, there. Uh, even uh, this week, uh, when it was really cold, uh, you had like um, many students on this university side and a lot of homeless people. They were coming there uh, and they, uh, they have their signs like this one. It says, uh, we're dying of hunger. We're starving. I decide uh, word to word translation, uh, and um, they are present there. They have their own claims also, and uh, um, there are different different social groups. Um, yeah, this is a, an interesting sign. Also, uh, we're n we're not. We're no longer negotiating. Yeah, yeah, we're not negotiating. Um, this protest cannot be stopped. Uh, it already raised consciousness. Um, this is a sign about 
it's a classic <laughs> already. Uh, and these are like the two big, uh, I mean, it's like the Democrat Liberal Party and uh, this union between uh, socialist, uh, social democrats and uh, liberals, which are in the opposition, and it's, a, it's, the, it's the same uh, crap, basically. Uh, okay. Um, in, a, in a repressive and corrupt state, uh, Representative democracy is just a, a contradiction in terms. I'm, I'm translating like. Self contradictory. Yeah, it's self contradictory. I'm, yeah. Uh, okay, this is kind of clear against capitalism. Um, mm, uh, I think uh, I have the other ones also. <laughs> The, the gendarme, uh, if, you, uh, if you beat us uh, harder, you'll get a bigger bonus. Uh, hit me hard, uh, and uh, Igash is the ministry, Minister of uh, Internal Affairs, and uh, Igash is supporting you. <laughs> you know? By the way, isn't, isn't, he, isn't he noticed because uh, the previous one resigned because of the protests? Blaga. Blaga resigned previously. No, a long time ago. The, I mean, the police people, when the policemen protested, oh, yeah. Blaga resigned. Yeah. Okay, so the, the fall of 2010. Yeah. So. Uh, respect for immigrants. I mean, um, you have also uh, a lot of uh, national, um, I, I would call them, you know, nationalist. Uh, uh, slogans and claims in the square. You have like a lot of uh, yelling about uh, the country, about Romania, and so on. And um, there are also people, monarchy. a monarchy. Also, you have a small group, but uh, there is also um, a sort of um, subversion of those. For example, when people are yelling uh, Romania, Romania, uh, there are always people yelling. So it's like a sort of uh, in, they're intercalated with this clapping. So when they are clapping, so they say Romania, clap Romania. And when the clapping is going on, there are always people saying police state. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you have like, like these uh, uh, small uh, struggles uh, within, uh, within this, uh, these groups. Uh, also, uh, there are like uh, these... Um, Slogans: uh, Romania, wake up! Uh, but there are people coming and saying, uh, "Rahova, wake up!" Or you know, like <laughs> District Eight, wake up! It's not like Hungary, wake up! It's like District Wait, wake, well, wake up! Yeah. Do you have many immigrants? No. Uh, I, I I don't know how to answer your question. What do you mean by many? I mean, <laughs> um, like as compared to the. To the number of the population, <laughs> because mm. I was under the impression that there are not the, that immigration in your country is mm. not that big of a pro problem as in in Western Europe. There are in the east, as in, in in Moldova, there are a lot of uh, Eastern Asian, uh, especially women working in sweatshops. Yes, which had been a problem a couple of years ago. I don't know if mm -hmm. it was addressed. But they went on strike and uh, attacking the bosses, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just want to add that I think not the immigration is the problem, but the Western Europe is a problem. <laughs> yeah, yes, it, it no, can but be. we don't have such a big number. I must admit the, the immigration problem is not uh, something that's very present. So I, I don't know where it came up from, but it's a good um, thing in itself. Mr. Arafat, uh, what, what is his story exactly? Did he come as an immigrant, as a refugee, or as I think he was, a he was a student. He studied uh, medicine in Romania. He's, he was born in Palestine. Uh, and, uh, and he stayed there. He started this uh, emergency service, which became very popular. And, um, yeah, he started to work for the government. He uh, was a state secretary. He had... Uh, this argument with the president mainly against this uh, law project. Uh, he resigned, uh, and after they rejected the project, they took him back. 
which was kind of a weird movement from his side. I don't know how he's positioning now, uh, but anyway, there is still a strong uh, support uh, for this emergency service that he built uh, in Târgu Mureș. Uh, every time when you have like this uh, small ambulance, people are clapping. When you have a police car, they are you booing. Uh, so you you have like all these uh, reactions that are kind of telling how people position about. Was Arafat also trying to hijack the, the protest in a way to claim that it's I don't think he made any comment. He said he, he's thanking the supporters of Allah, but he didn't go further than that. No? I I don't know about about this, but he actually said that he would. I mean, that he that if the government offered his job back, he would take it. So at least he was. Well, they did. <laughs> he kept his word on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, this, uh, uh, you will pay for the social, cultural, and economic genocide. Uh, so this is uh, the commander of gendarmerie counted us uh, we're just one in the square uh, and uh, from that one to our hooligans oh <laughs> 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 uh, this is a long one uh, I'll just we say can skip the names cause I'll yeah 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 we don't want uh, IMF money uh, we want your fortunes, or your how do you call? Is it fortune? Yeah. yeah fortune. The money you, your wealth. Money. Yeah, your we money. want your wealth, and they are giving. <laughs> and they are giving these names of um, you know businessmen and politicians with big fortunes and so on. Um, I uh, I work to live. I don't live to work. Uh, this is um, <laughs> the slums are coming. This is related to what the uh, minister of external affairs um, comment. He called uh, the people in the square uh, just some uh, violent slums, uh, unarticulated. Uh, they are just some beggars, and we don't negotiate with beggars because uh, beggars don't produce anything. And uh, we want uh, a Romania that is working and. Uh, Okay. Yes. Yeah, and he was. Yeah, maybe we should say that he it, was fired. He was, fired. Yeah. he was. Yeah, he was fired by an SMS. But uh, nevertheless, he <laughs> uh, he kept his position in the party, and he said that that's more important for him. He's a vice president of this Democratic Liberal Party, and yeah, he he didn't apologize for these comments. He didn't. Uh, you know, accept this situation, like even the fact that he was, uh, I, did they force him to resign or uh, he was no, fired? He was, fired. He was in yeah. Brussels and they sent him an SMS. Yeah, yeah. They said oh. it would be blowing the cards. <laughs> <laughs> so the slums are coming. Um, Last night there was a civ uh, that was a war uh, civilians uh, against gendarmes. Uh, this is an interesting claim. Uh, uh, we leave all of us, or you go to hell. It's quite quite direct. Uh, do you want to do something for me? Do a heart attack. <laughs> It, it, it's it doesn't make, really make sense in English because when anybody has <laughs> And uh, this is uh, like the Russia Montana group. This is, I don't know. I think they are from Occupy Romania. I, I cannot tell them. <laughs> uh, but um, Occupy Romania is wearing these anonymous masks and uh, they have their own actions uh, which are kind of uh, different color, let's say, in the square. Like they have drums. Uh, they're wearing masks. Uh, they have like separate actions. Um, this is um, we were uh, evicted from the house down with the system. Um, the state pays more to repress us than to educate. Uh, seven, uh, yeah, seven million ladies. It's like, yeah, seven hundred. Yeah, for 
for a teacher uh, it's like the double for a how do you, police, agent. police agent but it's like the lowest, uh, lowest the lowest rank you know uh, down uh, down with the um, wage uh, slavery Oh, this is an action from uh, Occupy Romania. Uh, they put this banner on the National Theater. Um, this is like really huge <laughs> sign that covers this big building, and they made this. Uh, we we learn. No, uh, we grow. We learn. Uh, we organize. We organize. This is only the beginning. Okay, uh, this is against uh, Chevron and uh, get, uh, this uh, shale gas exploitation. And an anti-IMF. Oh yeah, and then, well, one of the slogans that is really popular uh, in in the square is like, we don't want to become an IMF colony, which which got very popular. There is like this strong reaction. Back to the Chevron gas thing. Is this the same thing as fracking? Yeah, yeah it's fracking. It's fracking, yeah. Well, there are some signs with, uh, you know, Chevron frack off. Uh, this is also kind of popular. Yeah. Or, you know, this uh, this uh, play with the fracking and fucking. It's, it, yeah, you see it on signs and so on. Um, all the parties are... All political parties are compromised. Uh, you get this one. Uh, uh, stop. Uh, turn off the TV. Turn on the revolution. Um, also, there uh, there are different feminist groups present. Uh, um, we, I want democracy, uh, no sexist, uh, misogyny, racist, homophobes, uh, uh, politicians, or government people. No mm? sexist in, the, in government. Basically. In government, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it easy on the tear gas. We're running out of money. We can't afford to pay you. We we're not uh, we're not the slaves of of the big capital. Okay, this is uh, a difficult one. Sorry, joke. <laughs> yeah, I have to explain a bit. Uh, it's like um, you have uh, this hunting uh, party, whatever, uh, with big businessmen uh, taking place in a in a natural reservation and uh, they uh, they are killing a lot of uh, how do you call Boar. it? Boar. Boar. Boars. Uh, and uh, it's not only Romanian businessmen, they are coming like I don't know uh, uh, the big boss from Mercedes and uh, they're like all these people from Europe is considered very popular by the media uh, it's very good for uh, you know foreign investments to bring them and so on but uh what uh, what they are saying is like uh, the Syriac Syriac is the the guy that or organize is organizing this um, so Syriac uh, and his hunters uh, uh, they are hunting boars once a year uh, they are hunting us for the rest of the year uh, okay this is like the um University side, you can on the other side is uh, um, is the theater side. Um, he's present every day. He's repeating these slogans. Uh, very active guy, uh, Claudio Crăciun, probably. You, know. yeah. you have also some. Uh, some of this. Uh, well, he was basically a uh, member of the Green Party, right? Yes, yes. So, what, is his, what was his strategy to. Uh, he resigned. He resigned. <laughs> and uh, he, actually, he was one of, of the people that were against uh, this uh, participation of the Green. Is it 
party or movement, green movement, I think is the name, uh, to take part in the square. So he was against this. Mm -hmm. So we should go there on our own if we want to. We shouldn't participate as a party. And But now he resigned. He, he's not involved. But he's just one of the guys in the square. He's not. There are no leaders. There are no hierarchical structure present so far. Um, I didn't do anything. Uh, please arrest me. <laughs> Which is kind of <laughs> direct. Well, this is uh, from Unira, uh, from the other square. <coughs> this, is how, uh, this is like the big shop with all this Bershka and so on. McDonald's. And, uh, here, here is the Raiffeisen Bank that was destroyed. Um, Fireworks again. <laughs> this is one of the victims, one guy, and and it's also very interesting in these videos uh, that when uh, they are putting someone down and uh, they are on the floor, sometimes unconscious, they continue beating them. Um, there's like a lot of. Uh, violence going on. Um, that I, I think they really enjoy taking part in this type of actions and that's what you see from the videos and there is like, uh, there are some talks about, uh, I mean they are talking about this adrenaline rush and uh, mm -hmm. how, uh, you know, they are really enjoying beating people and it's part of their jobs. And this type of violence is not seen as a problem also, in the mainstream media, uh, they're saying, well, it's their right to protest, it's <coughs> their right to be beaten, you have like this type of messages, uh, you know, like, it's, of course, you take a club, uh, you know, it's like <laughs> on your back uh, if you want to, okay, yeah. Talk a bit about the media. Yeah, the media say say because uh, from what I heard, they were pretty big jackasses. <laughs> and, and generally in the media, like all these, yeah. they were not really siding with. Uh, yes, I, I, I kind of agree with that. And uh, uh, they were, uh, even if they were present in the, uh, in the square and they were transmitting, like, th their comments uh, were, I mean, they were hilarious sometimes that they were filming and the images were the opposite of what they were saying. You know, so you get you get like these weird situations, or they are looking for uh, some uh, sensational news uh, uh, in this tabloid style, also on this news television like Realitata and so on uh, about uh, this protest uh, um, against uh, the shale gas exploitation. Uh, they were saying something like, uh, "We." Um, I don't know, like, we are uh, protesting there uh, in the square uh, in order to convince the Bulgarian government to stop the exploitation in uh, Bulgaria, which was totally nonsense. And on the other, and in the same article, they are saying, like, but, and this was happening on the, um, on this side of the National Theater, because, like, the more, um, okay, the old people, they, they are coming uh, at 2 o'clock usually. They are uh, staying there uh, till the evening, are present on this side. Uh, and in the evening, uh, there are more young people coming. So you have like this uh, change of groups. But sometimes, you know, you have young people in the morning. I mean, it depends. Everyone, you know, they come whenever they can. Um, and they're always filming on this... Uh, uh, on this uh, national theater side, uh, while on the other side, the university side, you have like more discussions, you have um, these groups that are organizing and they are meeting, like we had all these meetings that are happening every day uh, in different locations, wherever we can get like a, a big space and uh, this, uh, these groups uh, like Occupy Romania, uh, Biblioteca Alternativa, uh, um, like um, different different supporter groups, um, let's say, and different um, in, 
you know, like uh, not NGOs or whatever, uh, these different informal groups uh, and these grassroots movements that are having some uh, uh, some um, claims are meeting, you know, and we're trying to to prepare different actions and uh, uh, different. Uh, um, you know, slogans, what will we do next, what will happen tomorrow, what is the problem, what are the news, and so on. Um, they're always protesting on this university side. That, um, and sometimes, yeah, there is like this exchange. But anyway, the media is always uh, on this side where you have like more, let's call them more conservative uh, or... Um, these repetitive slogans against the government, against the president. So all you hear are these, uh, you know, same slogans. Yeah. That's what I want to say. I watch the TV. Oh, I see anti-government, anti-president demonstration. Nothing about neoliberalism. Nothing about yeah. feminism. Nothing about ecology, or very, very little. I watch on the, my Facebook the people I have on Facebook. I see all of this. So you have to understand. I mean, it's. A, Hundred percent different pictures. If mm. it's a, uh, if you see watch especially opposition TV station, you see that it is ex exclusively an anti-government protest. <laughs> Just this government, and nothing I, else. I want to to add to this. Uh, I I agree with you, and I want to add that. Uh, the people from um, the common space is, uh, is like a small group of activists and artists and so on. They made some signs uh, against uh, uh, capitalism and uh, these uh, uh, big companies and so on. Um, and uh, they were trying to go in front of these uh, televisions that they are filming constantly, the crowd. And... They were moving the cameras, you know? <laughs> they did it. And they, they were talking to some journalists. We also want to say something. We also want to discuss. Yes, yes, it's very nice, but people won't understand. Uh, and we cannot uh, uh, do a coverage on this and so on. Your, your messages are too complicated. They don't know what's this. Or, and, you know. So there is also this uh, sort of, uh, you know, reaction from the media. When you want to talk to them, they refuse. Even if they are covering, like, all the time. And oh, I, I didn't watch TV, but I understood that <laughs> it's everywhere, like... It used to be everywhere, now it's about the snow. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> oh, there are some photos. Um, it says... Uh, social housing, not cathedrals. Uh, there are also uh, these slogans uh, against uh, mm, <coughs> the building of churches and especially this uh, national cathedral that will be higher than the house of the people, I understood, and it's building now with government money. It's like a huge project uh, with, uh, I think it's like with three... Uh, underground levels for parking and so on. It's, it's uh, I mean, maybe you know more. 600 million euro. Oh, yeah, okay. And there are also <laughs> claims, uh, there are also slogans saying, uh, we want hospitals, not cathedrals. This is also uh, Democracy without a permit. Okay. Poetry is in the streets, and they were taking this photo in front of them. Uh, sorry? No, no, no. There are two people holding it. And no, they don't have any signs. They don't have any slogans. They refuse. I mean, there are people giving uh, manifestos or uh, something written. They always refuse anything from... Yes, sure. And you started to have like all these graffiti. It's, it's interesting that also the the walls, like these graffitis on the walls, are uh, including messages. This one says the revolution will triumph. Uh, uh, this this is from a manifesto um, that uh, was published on uh, it. It it went in the square, but uh, it was uh, it was published on Indie Media. And um, I think it was like 
like a week ago or two weeks ago and uh, I don't know if you can see it but um, these are some demands which uh, which are kind of interesting uh, says we want another kind of politics we want direct demo oh, sorry we want direct democracy we don't want to be represented but to participate in the making of the decisions which concern us we want a fair distribution of public money towards social interests, not for security and militarization. This is an important topic because uh, while, they, uh, while the government reduced uh, uh, the spending for education and health care, they increased uh, uh, the funds uh, for uh, secret services. We have like 12 secret services or something, different structures like secret whatever. Uh, anti-terrorist groups and so on and uh, of course they they increase the spending uh, uh, for the army we we have uh, um, military groups in Afghanistan and so on it takes a lot of money for this sort of uh, it's anonymous it was anonymous it was not claimed by anyone I circulated uh, in uh, in the square. Sorry, but um, at, the, at the same time, <clears throat> as far as I understood, there were one or even maybe two uh, kind of manifestos that I know from Cluj. Uh, like when they had these points, like well, you know, 15 or 16 points, something like that. Um, uh, so what's the relationship between these points and manifestos and the one that we see now on the, on the screen? Uh, well, there is... Uh a big list of demands that uh, was uh, uh, I think it's quite well written but it was claimed uh, by uh, different NGOs by a lot of NGOs that were not present in uh, in the square that were not present at the protest uh, and they are talking like these NGOs are talking in the name of uh, the protesters and there was a strong rejection of this I don't know if uh, it's this manifesto that you're talking about, but this this is circulating in the square. Uh, this uh, list of demands coming from the NGOs, but it's rejected by a lot of protesters, including by these um, small uh, groups that uh, are having different actions. Uh, now they uh, there are like a lot of discussions about these demands. What we are asking for what do we want? Uh, um, you have different clusters of ideas and so on. Uh, for me, this is a bit representative uh, for at least the university part of the square at uh, you know Universitate. Um, so uh, and what people are demanding on that side and what people are talking about and what the slogans are. And it was translated on Indy Media, it's not my translation, it went <coughs> in, uh, in Romanian. Uh, okay. But there was also a, something like a manifesto which appeared on behalf of the, the football supporters at the very beginning. So what's uh, the relationship between that manifesto and this one which we saw now? I don't think there is any relation. No relation. No, no, no. Just different groups having their yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think the crucial one is probably more local. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not. And the supporters, it's important to say that the supporters also have their own, their own law that they're targeting. So actually, I mean, they have the, they're protesting against a law that would prevent yeah. them from going back to, to, to the stadiums if they are suspended. Or something. Mm, no, yeah. it's about get going to jail. If you make trouble on a stadium, you go to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Now it's just a fine. Mm -hmm. So it's a discipline. Okay, this this is it. So this is not. I'm not against the system. The system is against me. <laughs> yeah. So this was my presentation. And if you have more questions or <laughs> yeah. Well, what I've read so far, uh, it was, I mean, on Reuters and so on. Uh, I didn't follow it very, you know, syst 
very organized. Uh, but what I read so far, uh, they were mainly taking the messages uh, from the local media or they came with a very similar message to what the mainstream media is saying in Romania. I know that there were like uh, um, some, um, let's say, uh, independent... Uh, media groups uh, that were transmitting a different message uh, uh, but those are limited in the sense of coverage and so on what uh, what the big media western media and so on is transmitting is the same message and they are always citing I and mean, this is a sign for me you know they're always citing the ministry of internal affairs the chief of gendarmerie they're citing the government, they're citing uh, the opposition, they are not, uh, <laughs> you know, they're not using any information coming from the protesters. The Guardian is actually having, uh, having good coverage, and they use stuff from the okay. protesters. Mm -hmm. So the, the Guardian, in the UK, they mm -hmm. have pretty good coverage. I mean, it's one of, the, mm -hmm. one of the few that had a more of a balanced coverage, I guess, but it's mm -hmm. understandable because it has left-wing orientation. Just on the subject, comparing and contrasting to Hungary in the last month mm -hmm. or so, it, it seems to me that the kind of the establishment opposition in Hungary was very successful in communicating to the international media their message, mm -hmm. and the uh, and, and the domestic government really didn't, which is mm -hmm. why you know, Orban mm -hmm. is compared to Hitler, although he might be, but it's it's still mm -hmm. propaganda either way. And I'm just curious, like in terms of Romania, what do you see? certain sectors of the media or intelligentsia, if you will, that the international media kind of went to first to understand? Um, I think even uh, when they talked to the opposition, and they did talk to the opposition, um, their message was not, and <coughs> this I can tell you also from the local media, they are not including what people are demanding in the square. You know, they are just going uh, for... Uh, you know, more reforms, uh, same neoliberal uh, discourse, but with a more human face. Uh, they they want uh, the government to resign. They want uh, new elections and so on. But um, their um, their message is very limited in a way, in a political sense. And they uh, they cannot afford uh, to criticize this austerity measures full time and they cannot uh, uh, you know complain about you know how the market works and so on so their message is mainly a uh, anti governmental message even if in in uh, in the square it's not always the case the the message moved a bit from this you know mano happening in Hungary is that this thing in, in Romania is, is is clearly against so it, it, it's it, they don't want the opposition to, to hijack it. They don't want any political party because they're all organ or to be compromised. Or NGOs also. Or NGOs also. So while in Hungary it's kind of you know this LMP whatever thing, you know they which is probably strategically better because they have better channels of communicating with the international press. In Bucharest and in Cluj, this, this is not the case. So it, it's harder for them to get the message to us in, I don't know, BBC or Associated Press or something. So how do you feel about the national media coverage? I mean, aren't you just pissed at them for focusing just on the anti-governmental protest and not taking anything else into account? Because to me, as you said, if on the... Oh, yeah. on, Sorry? Yeah. Sorry, for the, I mean, if you watch the opposition media, you can say, okay, the protests are okay, but what we need is neoliberalism is a human face. Mm -hmm. They don't focus on that, so on anything else. So what do you think as a participant? Because we were here at the embassy also, and not only that it was not reported, but most of the reports we saw, there was nothing about, anything about neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. It was reported. It was, it was, it was reported. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I don't think that people are actually surprised by this type of attitude. And, you know, I mean, 
we didn't expect much from the media in the first place. I mean, I didn't, and my friends, my affinity groups, and so on. We were, I mean, there is a sort of uh, discussion about trying to hijack the media. Um, there were even some debates to occupy the Romanian television and so on. I don't think it really works like that or, you know, at least they were trying to, uh, some groups tried to get uh, into dialogue with these uh, media people in the square to, you know, to discuss what is going on. You have like all these reporters present there. It's, it's like a lot of media present, but they, they don't see what is going on. They don't want to get involved and so on. The problem with the media, I think, is a little bit more complicated because the two stations, Antena 3 and Realitatea, uh, have, have had a very anti-government discourse, but they've only created a counter-discourse. Sort of. mm. they, haven't, they haven't offered a channel for actual criticism of the institutions and of the policy. All they've done was pointed the finger at the government, mm. and when they realized that the pr protesters are rejecting this type of message, I mean, when they saw that the, the, the it's so different, I mean, the messages are so different, and they also have a uh, anti-capitalist you know, sort of me sort of message, they turned to this to the same discourse of the power of the mm. power structure. Oh, they were hoodlums, they were hooligans. They're <laughs> because mm. at, at first they they were happy to see anti-government mm. messages and. So on, so they were supporting it. But when they saw that the people were not mm. actually, uh, you know, mm. fitting this framework that they were trying to project of the protests, they turned against mm. the. Yeah, but uh, but it's also yeah. very interesting that yeah, so. uh, <laughs> that even uh, the current government is trying to hijack the protests uh, because they are criticizing the opposition. And they say, oh, look, they're also criticizing <laughs> the opposition just like us, you know. So uh, the, the Ministry of Tourism, uh, Udra, <laughs> was saying that he's, she is, I mean, she's very important in the uh, social democracy, in the PDL, you know, she's uh, an important member. She was saying, I am supporting the protests, I am... I agree with the messages and we're against uh, the violence provoked by uh, uh, some uh, hooligans and uh, some members of the opposition and this, uh, um, you know, constant uh, incite to violence coming from the opposition. We support the peaceful protesters and we're with them and we criticize the opposition, you know, so... You mentioned that the uh, political parties were not allowed or not welcome, but then you just also just said NGOs. I want you to explain: were they excluded or just not? Um, no, no, they were not excluded. They were expected to join. They didn't. Uh, there were members of different NGOs present, but um, not in the name of the. The only I, I don't even know the structure of this is Salvatio Roscia Montano, which is present. It was, it was always present. I, is it an NGO? I, I don't know exactly. Was this? Yeah, yeah, it's not an uh, just to articulate, mm. I felt anti-NGO feeling there. I just want. What, what did you um, mean by that? It's it's also debatable, you know, like like this anti-NGO feeling. But um, they uh, there is a constant fear of uh, you know of this protest uh, being hijacked by different groups with different interests and so on. And uh, this list. Uh, of NGOs, like there were like a lot pro pro democrazia, I don't know, um, oh, the like monitoring yeah, yeah, like all the big NGOs uh, uh, wrote uh, this list of demands with messages coming from uh, from the square, from the demo, and so on. Uh, but they were claiming to represent the movement and what is going on there, and that was seen. Uh, as uh, as a sort of hijacking, like them as uh, as groups uh, to um, to take uh, to get some uh, benefits out of it, while they were not ac actually involved, they were not active participants in this protest. They, you know, so in this sense. But they are they are still. Uh, I think that people are still expecting the support and are still expecting also the trade uh, union support. You know? I was wondering if, in your opinion, you see this 
mobilization having any actual prospects of changing things? Or you think that eventually people will just get bored and give up? Well, well I think that um, one of the signs says that, you know, it doesn't matter if the protest will finish or it will continue because it already, already raised consciousness. And I think that's like the strongest message. Like, uh, I don't think that the things will be the same in Romania. And it, you have to understand that uh, this is like the first major protest uh, after, you know, 20 years, 22 years that it's it's a big uh, it's a big event happening and people are talking about it uh, are debating even i mean you know simple things like going on the street in the neighborhood and you hear people talking taxi drivers for example are talking all the time about it uh, now uh, they want to organize and to block uh, the center uh, like all taxi drivers in Bucharest, for example, and they're very engaged in this, and they were trying to help people, like to, you know, uh, provide uh, transportation and so on. So, uh, I think it it will continue in different forms, and these groups uh, are organizing now. It's like a grassroots movement that will become something else. Yeah. No. Can you talk a bit about the, the forms of solidarity in, in the square, food, people keeping themselves warm, and mm. uh, decision making, things like this? It would be nice to hear some stories. Um, first of all, um, you have to understand that uh, this, uh, these discussions and uh, these slogans, everything is uh, taking place under this surveillance and with with this riot uh, police officers uh, in full outfits you know like robocop and so on uh, and they are present there they are you know very close to you uh, there is like this constant intimidation taking place like a body search every time you get in uh, and uh, this creates a form of solidarity already between the people, even if there are like different opinions, uh, uh, they, they tend to, uh, to have peaceful discussions, to debate, and there are like a lot of debates taking place um, about uh, support. Uh, there, there are always uh, people bringing hot drinks, hot tea, uh, sometimes food uh, and uh, you know like people are sharing their signs uh, they're doing things together they're writing slogans uh, as a form of solidarity they were making uh, snowman you know there and people were yelling we have uh, another person and you know it, it's like this type of uh, you know irony and so I mean it's also fun in a way you know it's not like like this uh, uh, sinister, uh, you know, uh, support. And, you know, after so long, you know, it's like the third week, people started to know each other because you see them every day and uh, they started to talk. There are also new people, but uh, there is like this uh, this form of discussion and uh, it's it's really, I mean, as I felt it and also my friends and so on, it's a, it's a safe environment to be, you know, and not because of the police, you know, it's, <laughs> it's because of us, so, yeah. Any other <laughs> comments, questions? Yes? Uh, the beginning, how did it begin? Because I know about the issues, mm. about Arafat and all that, mm. but uh, how... How did the first uh, thousand people go to the street? <laughs> well, I don't know. There are some people claiming that they started it. You know, like, <laughs> I started this <laughs> protest, I organized it, and so on. You know, uh, but um, it's, it's difficult to say. Uh, it was a spontaneous protest. No group actually organized it. It was not started by some, I don't know, NGO. It was not prepared before, as far as I know. I don't know, maybe there are different stories, but 
uh, it was a spontaneous protest that grew unexpectedly, let's say. There were some precedents, though, the, in, at the end of November with the, the, yeah. with the university occupation that lasted for a week. No, for a weekend, actually. It was 100 really? hours. Yeah, 100 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And a, a week of occupations uh, within the Rocha Montana campaign in Cluj, where they, they went to the television, they occupied the former mm -hmm. hotel building and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so there were, in Cluj and in Bucharest, there were some precedents. Also, uh, there was this uh, protest for the day of uh, human rights. Uh, it was illegal protest in front of the National Theater organized by Occupy Romania. They were all arrested yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, they got the fine for protesting illegally. And, of course, they frame it like this, you know, it's the day of human <coughs> rights were here, you know. Um, but... Uh, it it was it was really outrageous what was going on. And there were not so many people. There were maybe like fifty people taking part in this protest. But the information spread. You know, when they were arrested, you have all these uh, you know uh, YouTube videos how they were you know taken into the police bus and so on. Uh, and uh, there is a very, uh, very popular moment when there is uh, this guy from Occupy Romania. He's lifted and he says, uh, uh, actually, you know, I'm here uh, for your rights also. And I'm here also for you. you now you can take me, do whatever you want. And this was like an important uh, image. But these were like very small, very small actions with uh, no impact, I would say, maybe in some particular groups or, you know, in... But people didn't know, didn't know about it. They, they were not even covered by main media, <coughs> in the peer in newspapers and so on. So it, there is a connection in the sense that they also took part, like these groups that were protesting before and organizing actions, they also, I mean, they are very present now in, in the, yeah, yeah. And they use their experience for this. And I think it's the same situation uh, with the ultras. They are present because they are the ones, probably the only group that has any experience with police brutality because it happens a lot at these football games. So, um, yeah. I had an amazing experience, like right, the things that you are telling about now. I was even in Cluj Napoca at the, at the first Sunday. Mm. I think the first, first like, riot was it Saturday? Mm. Um, I think. It was on the Friday. On so. like, yeah, yeah. Like this. And we was with some friends in Cluj. And we just got some messages and texts that something went off in Bucharest. Like, we were there, of course, with, with activist people, like, hosted by activists and, like, dealing with local activism. And we got some texts that come to the main square of Cluj at 7 because there would be something going on as a reaction to police violence which happened yesterday in Bucharest. Mm. So we went there. It was absolutely amazing. I never experienced nothing like this in Eastern Europe that I, like... When there at seven and there was like a bunch of people, like several groups of elder people or just normal yeah. people kind of having kind of like people's assembly, like yeah. talking and interpreting, reinterpreting the, the current situation. And then after an hour, about eight, uh, in, from nothing uh, appeared a big group of young people with a very loud chanting. And it was a Rosa Montaigne activists and the university students yeah. and the football hooligans together, and which was the really amazing thing, it was that the football hooligans was there obviously, because there was the only group, as Mihai thought, who had some experience with how to warming up the big crowd of people, how to kind of spontaneously organize resistance towards the cop violence, etc., etc. So they was there. The, like when when they when they came to the place, there was about two or three hundred people. So with them, with this big bunch of or big crowd of young people, we were about a thousand people. And then what 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 which the football hooligans did? 
the completely like spread over the there started warming up the, the crowd, like jumping and chanting. And I asked my friends who speak from NN what they are thinking about. And there wasn't one single nationalist or racist of any kind of abusive chant. It was everything anti-government, anti-corruption, anti-capitalism. And what was a really amazing thing for me, after one hour, when they did what they wanted to do, they organ like they was kind of gathered together and left the square together. Before they would lose the control, they really it was like, and of course, like Man mentioned it before, they they was of course kind of right wing people normally. But for me, I got just kind of feeling that they kind of subordinated their aim or agenda to the agenda of the world protest, and they can serve the people who wanted to protest. Thank you. So, some Hungarians. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. I was with. Basically, from an speaking activist. Uh, so but what I know from Cluj and from other uh, cities in Transylvania, uh, Hungarian um, participants and Hungarian protesters are very present in these groups. They have uh, uh, messages uh, written in Hungarian, they have uh, uh, their own uh, slogans. Uh, which are, um, it's, it's interesting that they are all against. Uh, the Udemere, you know, like uh, this uh, union uh, of, uh, I, I don't know how to translate the them. Democratic, Alliance, Democratic Union of Hungarian Union of Hungary. Hungary Party. Yeah. yeah, the Hungarian Party, yeah. which is part of the government now. Yeah. And um, they are uh, criticizing uh, this party <laughs> in Hungarian and so on. Um, and also, uh, I think it's very important to mention that uh, Roma people are present as a group, and there is like, uh, like uh, maybe this week there was a big group of uh, Roma people protesting against uh, the Roma Party, and that they are not represented by the Roma Party. In Bucharest. Or in Bucharest. In Bucharest. Uh, about the students, how you mentioned that they are coming in uh, in Bucharest, uh, they were marching from the campus from Regie, and every time when they were arriving, and it's kind of interesting because students always have like this printed uh, A4s, and you know, with all kind of messages and colors and whatever, if they have a <laughs> you know, a better printer and so on. And it looks kind of interesting when you see this group coming and there are like hundreds of people and so on. People start to cheer, like students arrive and, uh, you know, mm, I don't know, students are not violent, you know, like stuff like that because they are always received by this police force and, you know, what is going on and they want to check more and so on. So, um, Manu? Or? Yeah, I just want you to ask you the one million dollar question. Uh, not only there is no one million the, dollar <laughs> involved. Uh, the <laughs> demonstration <laughs> now, but in general, like, yeah. what is your? And I don't think I mean I'm thinking about this ever since I started to, you know, work on Romania as a PhD student. So what is? And there are obviously many answers. I'm just not interested in what is your version. Yeah, yeah. So what? How should we understand the? this amazing weakness and unprofessionalism and completely nostalgic, childish behavior of the extreme right in Romania at the moment? Um, I, I would bring here also Greater Romanian Party, not only this uh, uh, new right, I mean, I know that New Right is uh, building a party. It's called the Nationalist Party. Um, they're collecting signatures for it. Yeah, yeah. So they're working on that. But also Greater Romania Party is not present. Like, these groups are not present. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's hard to understand. What Why? is the childish behavior? I mean, childish, like, nostalgic, not really formulating a message that would be related to the actual, you know, problems of... Like, I mean, the, the, which is like, for us, of course, it's beautiful, because this is what allows this opportunity for our friends, you know, that they can be there and, you know, claim these spaces and claim all these things, you know. I'm just asking, like, uh, how, how, what's, what, what is this? I mean, like, for me, it's, it's really amazing at the moment in Romania. I think that uh, 
if we are talking about these conservative forces, um, I think the most active uh, is like this monarchist movement. Mm -hmm. They're very present in a way, you know, like there are these slogans, we want uh, our king back, we want, you know, uh, and this, this is somehow uh, an interesting group that is present there. It's ridiculized a lot by many activists, they're not taken so serious, uh, but they do come with a project in a way, you know, like uh, this whole mess is because, you know, we don't have whatever a king or, you know, <laughs> whatever they are saying. I mean, for me, it's it's a very conservative uh, and, you know, with this idea of national identity and so on, re rebuilding our national identity to how we were in the interwar period and so on when we had these great kings, and, I mean, we know about these kings, so how things work, but uh, they, they are somehow accepted in the square, and also, like I mentioned about these free nations, they're also active, they do consider themselves nations, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, um, it's, it's all about their logo. <laughs> yeah. So anti capitalist because they're pro feudalists. <laughs> pre feudalists, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, I think I think the other question is actually it mm -hmm. is the, the million dollar question. But I think at the same time the, there are signs of, of the extreme right rising and it, it shouldn't be uh, underestimated in, in, in Timishara actually mostly. Uh, there was a big uh, rally in I think October against uh, gypsy mafia, the, 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 the real estate mm -hmm. in Timisoara. Timisoara. So in Timisoara. So um, there are places where they are mostly. Uh, mm. I don't know if there was a new right or some group of hooligans there again. Uh, but mm. but I was just thinking about because I, I saw I was reading through the press and this is maybe an inside mm. thing. But there was all all always this 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 trope or this fear within the press, or within a certain type of press, about, oh, this is like 20 years ago when the mm. miners were coming mm. from, no. uh, from Zerbuju. It's the same, because 20 years ago, there was there mm. were these protests or these riots organized by miners against the government, and mm. which are legendary now mm. in Romania, because mm. uh, it was... Well, I, I don't think it, it was, I mean... I don't know what to uh, make, uh, if I can explain a bit this, uh, this protest, in, in the 90s, it was uh, more like a right-wing uh, reactionary movement against uh, uh, the socialists that came in power, but uh, with a very conservative, traditionalist agenda, with a lot of religion and nationalism present there. Uh, and uh, the government at the time used these miners uh, as a gendarmerie, in a way, to repress this right-wing demonstration, which, you know, kept in mind for, especially for these uh, right-wing supporters nowadays, uh, because we, we have, like, a lot of uh, criticism coming from these intellectuals, like, writing intellectual like, uh, Namtsu and so on, <laughs> Mihayesh and, yeah, I mean, okay, you know. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> So, uh, and there are always these comparisons. I mean, they're, they're very present, but uh, the, the main difference is uh, this, exactly this ideological positioning. And it's, uh, people are aware of it. And uh, they, they understand that it's not the same thing. You know, it's not the <coughs> same type of movement. And... Uh, there are also voices that are saying we shouldn't make any type of connection to what happened in the 90s, you know, to these protests. The University Square, uh, we had totally different agenda. It's just the location, but we have no connection to them whatsoever. And, uh, and about uh, uh, this uh, Greater Romania Party and uh, uh, the... Um, What's the name? New right, yeah. new right movement. Um, I, I think people are asking asking these questions in the square also. 
And, you know, like, where are these people? Okay, they tried to come, but uh, they were, I mean, they are not doing anything. What are they doing now, you know? So, uh, they're planning. They're planning, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and it's also a sort of fear that, um, which, I don't know, but I don't think that it's so productive in a way. Uh, this constant fear of uh, some group to hijack this protest and so on, like uh, to defend it against some people that were not there or to defend it against, I don't know, NGOs and so on. I mean, also the nationalists, there was this fear, oh, they will come and took our protest away. It, it exists. And it was only like, you guys, the guys needed only like a few yells or something like this and then they just went away. Um, I don't. I, I don't know. For example, that's something that I mean, childish, right? So, if you allow such a situation so, to happen, you know, so, that somebody tells you go away and then you go away. Well, what happened? They uh, they tried to make like a platform and they put their flags there and they have this megaphone. Um, they started uh, this message. So they had like all these uh, Celtic cross flags and so on, and. Um, they they were asked to leave and they were forced to leave just like with the politicians you know like with uh, Mr Orban from the Liberal Party he came once he was forced to leave he was uh, not allowed to talk he came back again on another day he was again kicked out of the so people are reacting uh, not in a physical way in a violent way but they don't let them talk you know and they are yelling against them and I mean, they are talking to to a crowd. You have to understand. So you have like this big crowd, and someone comes to talk to you, but everyone is yelling and shut up, don't leave us alone, go away. You're this, you know. So it's kind of difficult to continue in this situation. You have to leave, you know. And that's what happened to Dan Diaconescu also to to different people that try to you know join <laughs> the protest from this you know, position as a party member or whatever. Yeah. I just want to say it's just more paradox here. On the one hand, I mean, you send all these messages, but on the other hand, you're not, well, not that many. Mm. And you need to get attention, you get either organized protests or the opposition protests or trade union protests or mm. the TV protests or any anything that's not just that. But the moment you start getting this, it's very easy for the government to denigrate it. So that's I think that's why the government is completely ignoring the anti-neoliberal, anti-capitalist, feminist, everything protests, and they're focusing on whatever they, they, they can denigrate. The, Opposition TV, the opposition itself, the <coughs> trade union of the the trade union of the military, the former military mm. officers, and everything else. So, uh, how do you deal with it? Do you want to collaborate? Are you willing to collaborate with these groups? So, mm. the various motley groups that you, I mean, that don't like the president, or do you want to rather be more invisible but stay? I mean, first of all, I, I cannot talk in anyone's name, yeah, in course, anyone's name. Uh, but um, um, it's it's not something that uh, is organized in, in a hierarchical way. First of all, this is very important, and in in these conditions, it's kind of difficult to negotiate. You know, with political parties, because you have no leaders, you have no structure to talk with, to negotiate with, and there is this constant rejection of any type of, uh, you know, uh, people coming as, a, you know, leader or a faction that is taking power, because, uh, okay, they have their own claims, but they don't represent all of us, and... Um, and I don't think that there were actually uh, this uh, this sort of uh, you know movements coming from from the square. Like you know, maybe Remus Cherna tried that, and he failed. I mean, he was totally rejected after that. And he was. And I have to tell you that Remus Cherna was present there. He was accepted in the square. He was talking on the megaphone. He 
he was like one of the people, you know, of the of the protest. You know, he was a protester. He was considered a protester until he tried to do this uh, alliance with with the opposition, and he was rejected. So. Um, I don't know what will happen next, what will be the result of it, and so I, and I, I don't even want to think about this, but, and we shouldn't uh, see it in these terms, you know, what will be the solution, what are the results, and so I think it's very important what is going on now, and uh, the people um, are, uh, um, and you can see this difference, you know, from week to week, that the message, uh, the messages are, uh, more spread, there are more messages coming, there are more groups joining and so on. Maybe not this week because it was very cold, but uh, there are still different groups uh, coming, you know, like new groups. And this is very interesting. Also, the, the messages are getting more articulated, uh, even if there are, you still have these people yelling the same, you know, Jos Basescu, Jos Basescu, which is a lot, you know, and I mean, yeah, there is a lot of yelling against the president, you know. That type of slogan is very popular, but besides that, that there are a lot of other, you know, discussions and claims. And, and for example, this is very interesting. Um, a couple of days ago, um, there was, uh, on, the, on the Universitate side, uh, there was uh, this request, uh, we are all here. Uh, let's uh, take a break. No slogans. No nothing. Let's talk and know each other here in the square. And this was a very nice initiative, and everyone agreed to that. So it was kind of you know quite. Don't hear this uh, roar and so on. People were just in a square talking to each other and you know to the people next to you and so on. And this was a very nice initiative, and it worked, you know. So I think this type of uh, actions are are interesting and, you know, to be followed. And we'll see what will come out of that discussion, you know. So, yeah. Well, we had a long discussion. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much yeah. for coming. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah, to go. Run it's almost exactly two hours. What name can I use for you? <coughs> oh. Introduce you as? Mihai Lukacs. Mihai Lukacs. Okay, okay, okay. Just want to make sure.